Okay, here's another pile of crap I came up with here to play with. Not sure I want to do these things. Something I picked up and some stuff I bought. So, not sure what to do with these. These are uh, shovel heads that have been uh, hex cut. I'll cut like a hex here. Makes them look a little different. So, they've been all ground on and modified. So this one here is an 81 casting, so I'm assuming this one is too. So, these are 80 inch shovel heads basically. Doesn't really matter, they fit on everything. So, I want some input on what to do with these. I can just take them and sell them on eBay the way they are and make some money. Or at least attempt to. Or I can fix them up a little bit and see if uh, somebody wants to pay some money for some modified stuff. I can complete them as uh, stock heads more or less. I could hop them up and put some big valves in there or good valves or do some more porting or whatever I want. We can show all that on YouTube and show you how to do that or whatever. So give me some comments what you want to see or what you want me to do with these heads. I don't really care. They're just junk laying around here for now. But uh, for what they are right now, they're hex head cut. They been ported by somebody who thought they knew what they were doing. So they've been cutting on the valve guide bosses quite a bit. Yeah, I thought they cut them out. This one they cut the guide boss out. This one they left the guide boss in, so it must have been the same guy doing the work, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure which one he liked better, the one that we cut the boss out or the one we didn't cut it out. I like them with the guide boss in there myself, but yeah, who knows. Looks like they cut the exhaust guide boss out also. Oh yeah, why not? And make sure they get that out of there while they're at it. This one here is pretty much stock looking in there, so... I think they got tired after doing the first one, so they didn't do so much work on the second one. So that means they're a match pair now, right? Uh, they are cut for big bore cylinders. I did figure that out when I grabbed a set of cylinders over here. So these are some 98 inch cylinders, or 93 inch, or 6 inch, whatever the length they are. Just depends on what length they are in terms of size. They're 3 and 5 ace, so... When the heads fit onto them, that means they're big bore. So these aren't going to go on a stock bike. Maybe for a big bore application. So that makes it a little bit different option with a big bore and porting. So be right back. Alright, we're back. Interruptions. Alright, uh, anyway, I'm not sure what to do with these heads, so you'll leave comments. Let me know what you want to do. They're already set up for big bore. They've already got a lot of porting done. On this one, I pretty much have to make this kind of match this one. I'm not, I'm not going to cut the boss away in there, but I can open it up. So, it looks like the exhaust spigots are pretty good, which is kind of a miracle, surprisingly. The valves are sunk in pretty deep through here. See the big shoulder in here? They're set up for a uh, high lift cam. So, measuring some valves. So, anyway, I can put uh, stock on cheap, uh, well, I used to call these $5 valves. Maybe up to twenty dollars these days. I could put some row valves in there. They don't make any more, but I got some left. I can put some uh, kibble whites in there. Black diamonds. Good valve. There we go. There's a kibble white. See how they look different on the head shapes. These are definitely higher flow, better material. And if you want to get fancy, I got some uh, Kibble White 2 inch valves, so they're oversized. The exhaust, I got uh, CCI RevTech valves, which are pretty nice valves. Obviously, got the cheaper ones there. I don't think I have any more rows left. I got some uh, Kibble White here. Let's see if the bag is open over here. Yep. Here we go. Kibble white, so you can see how that looks good. Now this one I've been back cut already, you can see how I back cut them. Kibble whites are pretty well cut to the limit already, you don't, there's not much of a back cut to do on that. 
these were a little bit thicker, so we had more to work with. So we got different qualities of valves we can use. How about like that? So uh, I got some thin stem stuff in here, which is really going to be a pain in the ass. You want me to do this stuff? So these are five sixteen stem instead of three eighths. Not too many people use this stuff. So see how thin they are compared to a two inch valve to a two inch valve. You can see the difference in stem size. That's quite a difference in what's in the port down there. Of course, the guide's a little different. I have to come up with some valve guides to make these work. I might have some. I don't know. Anyway, if you want me to put those in there, that'd be a lot of work putting them damn things in there. I don't know if I have any thin stem exhaust. What's this one here? There's a thin stem exhaust. This one didn't look very thin, I guess it is. Yeah, that's a thin one. Yeah, that one's not open yet. There, it's open now. Mm, well, that's not that thin. That's why it didn't look very thin. So this is 3.8. This is 11 32nd sports device. It's not 516, so. So that would be the another oddball guide to find. Or work. More specialty crap. So anyway, it's just a matter of what goes in here. So, so for now this is a say the valves are sunk that means they're real deep in holes in here so you can see how instead of being way up here like a normal motor they're sunk down and I guess done for two reasons one is because it wears out so it's pretty much useless by being worn out or you do it for high lift cams because you have a big motor so to get more room for high lift you have to sink the valves because the valves will hit each other on the overlap that's when both valves are open like this they'll hit each other so you have to drop them down to get clearance so on race bikes, you sink these things way down, a lot more than this, depending on how big the cam is. So we can do these, or I can go to a bigger, a bigger valve. So let's see if you go up to a two-inch valve. See how it sits up a bit higher, but it sits a lot big closer here. You say you lost your clearances. They also used to make oversized exhaust valves. I don't see any of those floating around right now, so. You don't really need oversized exhaust valves. These are big enough already. So that's a two-inch one there. So these are 1950, the stock size over here. Or actually not 1950, excuse me, that's Sportster. These are 1937. One and 15 sixteenths. These are two inch. These are one and three quarter. So anyway, you can do stuff like that. You can put the like, put the better valves in there. There's kibble white on both. Just a matter of what you want me to build it as. There's a lot of clearance over here because they're sunk a lot, so you don't have to put a real high lift collar in it. I got some different valve springs and stuff to play with. I got some old uh, 70s, 80s style racing stuff. These are like Sportster springs that make the big twins. Here's some crane. High lift stuff. These are actually Evo. These are crane springs here, so these don't work. Why'd you grab those? Here's some manly stuff. See, they match. So this one here is for 465 lift, but when it's, the valves are sunk like that, you'll go another up to 100 more. If you take the lower collar out, like there's no lower collar with this one, you just have the spring sit on top of the washer here, you pick up another 80 or 90 thou more clearance for bigger cams. Here's some uh, titanium stuff. So this one's 465 lift again, but once again, these don't use the lower collar, so they got more clearance. So I got all kinds of different stuff I can use. I can put stock stuff in there. There's stock spring, stock valves, junk. So these are uh, crane springs, got lots of these. These run stock collars or modified collars, depending on what you got. Uh, go to the over here. We got collars all over the place. There's some collars, there's more collars. There's a bunch of junk here. So these are stock. 
Shelly collar, top and bottom. These are, uh, this is probably a Sifton green collar, or it's black in color, but it looks like a Sifton. It's a real high lift one. You don't really need stuff like this on this motor unless you run a, you know, 600 something lift cam, then you would need it. I've got some of that stuff. We want to do that. Here's some uh, like SMS ones here. They're the same offset of these. There's some uh, black ones in here that are in between stock and regular. There we go. So you see how they're lower. There we go. Get down low where you can see stuff. You can see how they got different offsets on this thing. There's stock. Here's a real low aluminum one. There's a real low red one. Here's another red one here. Let's see that goes over here. So these are all made for different lift motors. So you can see the differences in lift. This is lower than stock. That looks like that's stock. That is stock. This one here is a above stock. That one is about the same as this one, above stock, more above stock. So there you go, you got them, they step up. When you put higher lift cams in there, you start stepping up your spring spacing. So we can determine what we're going to use. These are all for stock diameter springs, all of these collars here, they all bolt on like that. So they all just go on there like that and pop in. So this is the lower collar. This is a 74 inch one. There's some other ones in here. Here's your late 80 inch stuff. This is 82 and later. They use a different guide. So this one sits on top of the guide on the shoulder right here. This one here sits right on top of the head, not on the guide. So the guide, it goes inside the guide. This one actually sits on top of the guide. This is a 74, so it doesn't fit an 80-inch guide. Let's find an 80-inch 80, 80 one. That's an 80. There's an 80-inch one right there. So I like these because they sit on top of the guide, make sure the guide cannot come off, come loose. So that's the ones I like using. And you can see I cut them for the lip. I got another one there too. Another stock one. You can see I cut them here for the lip. Right here. It's confusing. When you cut this lip off right here, like this, you have room for valve seals. Because right now, when you put this on there, it doesn't fit. And when you put this one on there, it doesn't matter. You see how there's a lip right there, you don't have a lot of room for a valve seal. When you put this one on there, you can see how you got room for a valve seal. Valve seals are 300 thou tall, so you get you 300 thou tight clearance. Allows you put a valve seal on. And we're talking about the uh, uh, this style valve seal. Metal clad. These rubber ones like this take up more clearance. You know, unless you have a really high lift can or if you have a lot of clearance in your motor, you can put these in there. These ones here will clear better. Plus these here, if they contact the guide or the collar hits and they snaps off the rubber part, and the top of the seal falls off. This one here, if you tag it, it tends to just collapse a little bit and doesn't hurt too bad. At least initially, it will break it eventually though. So so anyway, just uh, you know, give me an idea of what you want me to do. Show you stuff or not, it's up to you. The other problem he says is, is that uh, the genius that uh, was working on him, he was grinding all the fins away right here, and for some reason he wanted to grind the intake spigot. So the spigot's all been ground, got a big gouge in there right there. So this is, a, this is an outside one, it takes the rubber on the outside boot. He did a good job of grinding these things all out. They're supposed to be this size and smooth. So they're close to the right size, but they're not very smooth. 
Yeah, with a rubber, it might not be a bad deal. It might seal, but in the real world, I don't like it. So I'll probably want to have to turn the OD down just a little bit to make it a little more straight and round, but I don't want to cut too much because the rubber's too big. And I can also do a port job and open these things up a lot bigger. This is an SNS intake manifold. You can open them, you can bore these out here and make them bigger. Go in here and knock some of these turds off here and make the car better. Or you can take a RevTech manifold, which I like better. I don't think they make these anymore though. It's made for a Vos switch, which I like, vacuum advance. But you can see how much bigger the inside of this manifold is on the ID. And it's got more potential for flow. I still got the same pigot diamond on this side, here. And it's got the manifold itself is a lot physically bigger. See how this is all sculpture cut down? This one here is not. So it gives you a bigger plenum chamber inside of here. It gives you more, gives you a little more potential for power, a little bit more uh, flow potential in there. So it makes it a little bit different. The throat here looks like it might be slightly bigger, but I don't remember them being bigger. I know the SNS fits right on it. Yeah, it's just a tick bigger. This one's 875, and this one here is 850 or something. So it doesn't matter the SNS carb will seal against it, but it's slightly different. Okay. But anyway, I can port these things out, either one of these two, and match them up to the intake. So you get a package deal where everything lines up. Depending on what stroke you're going to use. This manifold is plus 200, this one's stock length. That's why they have these numbers right here. Zero means stock. This one here, they don't tell you what it is. It's a secret. It's a D. And if you go by the part number, it's 200 pound longer. So, so anyway, we, can, you know, we can figure out what kind of cam I'm going to be putting this thing. I can run a mid range cam, a high end cam, or cam, or a race cam. So. For being a big motor, this is set up for big bore cylinders and valves are all sunk. It's probably going to get some of more of a top end cam, like an Andrews B grind or a crane. Um, uh, we got a two, uh, something to 250s duration, something high up. 256, 258 duration, you know, close to 500 lift. So these heads are set up for that, so it'll probably use something big like that. So, well, you know, it's just a matter. Anyway, let me know what you want, and then uh, we'll do it and show you how to do it all. And then they'll be for sale. Somebody wants them. So it's just a matter of what parts we put in there. The less good stuff that goes in it, the cheaper they are. But uh, anyway, that's where we're at for now. So let me know. Leave comments.